In 1989, the largest oil spill in U.S. history destroyed a remote Alaskan wilderness. That was a long time ago. Most people say the sound is back to normal, except for this man. He's been studying killer whales caught up in the spill. He believes they're still dying, and it could be because of oil. Oh my God, it smells like a gas station. To check it out, we load 2,000 pounds of provisions onto a sailboat and set out to reach ground zero for the spill. Here's the deal. Yeah, I think this should show the Cape. Yes. We'll go around Cape Resurrection, uh, pointing across. Once we get inside of Cape Elrington here, we'll be safe. How far away until we're safe? Uh, nine to 10 hours is what it should take. With that south forecast now, it is gonna be building, heading right at us, but yeah, we should be able to beat it. Gotta go, gotta go right now. Yellow warning Tuesday. Today, south wind 30 knots. Sea seven feet building to 12 feet in the afternoon. Rain. Tonight, southwest wind 30 knots. Seas 14 feet. There's remote, and then there's where we're going. We have to cross the Gulf of Alaska. It's a place where the waves can build to 40 feet. Our boat is 36 feet. It's a great boat, but you wouldn't want to take anything smaller on a journey like this. All right, so we had a little bit of weather. We were able to make it out. It was good because it was now or never. This morning, there was, they're forecasting, man, look at that, we're underwater. They're forecasting a huge storm coming in. Tomorrow, we were able to get out. Hopefully we're going to be in Why are we underwater? Hopefully. Okay, let's help him out. He might need a reef. You, you need a reef? Oh my god. Look, it's flat out hail. We've also got a serious lightning storm going on. Wow, look at that. Yeah, don't hold on to any metal. I don't know if you can see that on my hand, but it is coming down hard and fast. We're seeing lightning off in the distance. We're on a sailboat with a mast that reaches up into the sky. After a rough day at sea, we finally reached the protected waters of the Prince William Sound. This is where a tanker unleashed a catastrophic amount of crude oil back in 1989. Should be good. We'll shut her down. We're done. Now that we're here, we'll settle in and try to make contact with the team who's been studying the whales that were caught up in the spill. Been a wet, wet day. Let me help you out, buddy. Natoa, Natoa, uh, Sweet Babu, Channel 16. Maybe he thinks Sweet Babu is your nickname for him. <laughs> He's, who would, I would not want to answer that call. <laughs> He's like, that's not me. You must, must be another research boat. Well, I don't know. We're not getting him, so. It's after 9 o'clock. It's been a long day. We'll just have to start fresh tomorrow. Some crews are literally on their knees using absorbent towels to remove the oil from rocky beaches. So this is from the spill, and you have uh, two, it looks like fishing boats, trying to clean up this uh, stream of crude oil and swimming directly towards that crude. You have at least two killer whales. Here you have a puffin where it was white is black. I mean, it, it is astonishing that you have oil hitting one reef and spreading 1,500 miles, the largest oil spill in the United States at the time, but it makes you wonder what are the long-term effects of that oil spill? What's left today? Smells like a gas station. There's this big social disruption. And then some of the survivors are ill also. We got big fins, we got the killer whales. There's some beaches you can go to, you can still smell it. To this day, you can still smell to it. To this day, yeah. 